All right, guys, we made it to the FCS playoffs. We made it, everybody I know, right? So, first round begins this Saturday. It will be Saturday, November 27th. Um, gonna be an interesting first round. All games will be on ESPN+. Plus. I gotta go over the bubble real quick. I go, gotta go over some other things real quick. Let's go over the bubble. The last three teams that did not get in. Fortunately for Mercer, they didn't make it by losing their SoCon finale to ETSU, and they also scheduled a D2 team. That's unfortunate. With only seven wins, you know, six of them against, you know, FCS opponents. They only had 10 games scheduled as well, so that kind of hurts them. Rhode Island, you know, lost their last game of the season, plus the rest of the CAA did look good this year. Um... Eastern Kentucky, they didn't have the strength of schedule there to make it in. And they played, had a bad loss to Indiana State, which really doomed them in most people's opinions. Uh, at least the national writers and stuff like that. What's also kind of weird is how we go back from, you know, we had the championship on ABC two straight years. And why are we back to ESPN2? Why are we putting... The FCS championship on ESPN2. It does not make any sense. Why are we doing this? Why? There's a whole lot of nothing. Well, actually, there might be something. I can't remember what ABC schedule was looking like for December the 11th. But there's a whole lot of nothing in that time slot before those NFL games. You know, on January 8th, that you could put that FCS championship slot that game in there. And it won't be a problem. I don't, I don't understand it. ESPN makes me sick sometimes. They make me sick. You know, speaking of things that do make me sick as well, why? Why do my fellow HBCU fans not get how the Celebration Bowl works? Only SWAC and MEAC teams at larges, at large bids can go to the playoffs. Champions of the SWAC and the MEAC go to the Celebration Bowl. Again, we'll be talking about the Celebration Bowl in a couple weeks in that first bowl Saturday. And we'll pair that in conjunction, you know, with the FCS semifinals. And the other thing is I'll be pairing the quarterfinals up with the Army Navy game. So all of that, all of those games will be rolled up into one video, just so y'all know, just so y'all get that out of the way. So uh, I'll be back for the second round next week as well. So, Sacred Heart and Holy Cross. This is the first matchup of the playoffs, and for Sacred Heart, they got a they got a strong running game. The Northeast Conference champions do. Julius Chestnut, who we've highlighted extensively, you know, in the first, you know, in the first couple of games of that spring season, they also got Malik Grant as well. And for the Patriot League champs, the Crusaders of Holy Cross, they got a nice quarterback by the name of Matthew Sluka. You know, he's a dual threat guy, and this Holy Cross offense is just rolling. They are rolling. They put up 500 yards in their last game. They put up 40-something points in their last few games as well. They are rolling right now. So that's going to be a real intriguing one. Davidson, Kennesaw State. Davidson won the Pioneer League. Kennesaw State won the Big South. Both teams, they run the option. Different ways they run it, though. Kennesaw prefers the flex bone, like Army and Navy and the Citadel and Air Force. And Davidson prefers the Coastal Carolina, the uh, the Georgia Southern type spread option. You know, it, it's going to be a battle of two good quarterbacks, Xavier Shepard for Kennesaw State and Luis Colosimo for Davidson, the Wildcats of Davidson, you know, going to be an intriguing matchup. Not a lot of passes are going to be thrown, I imagine. Stephen F. Austin at UIW is the third matchup of these playoffs, first round. And the Southland Champs at UIW, they're looking at the arm of Cameron Ward. A uh, really good passer, really good, a really, a really key player, you know, in in these you know games that UIW has won. Also, Marcus Cooper checked out him as well, you know. And for Stephen F. Austin, who's only lost their three games by what a combined eleven points, you know, 
Um, they they got to look to the arm of Trey Self. I mean, this is, this is a guy that's just been throwing it up. He's been throwing it up, and he's making it work. And with receiver Xavier Gibson, uh, I, I think, you know, things are looking pretty high. Going to be one hell of a matchup there. UC Davis, South Dakota State is the next matchup here. You know, UC Davis has lost two straight games. I don't know why they've lost two straight games. But then you look around, and you see that the offense isn't there. Their offense hasn't looked great. Their defense hasn't looked great either. And they need to watch out for Jack Rabbit's running back, Pierre Strong Jr. He's, he's an interesting back. You know, South Dakota State has, you know, really looked good at times this year. I mean, look at that Colorado State game they played early in the season. That was just a pummeling. Could the same thing happen here with a struggling UC Davis? They, they got in because of their strong start, the Yankees did. But they, need to, they need to have another strong game if they want to keep it up. Go to the second round. Now here's the here's the game here that a lot of people are kind of you know iffy on, a big one. Northern Iowa, who barely got into the field at six and five, in my opinion, but they have three top tier victories against teams in the playoff field. That's probably why. That's probably negates the five losses. And Eastern Washington's kind of angry. They don't have a seed. And this is going to be a quarterback battle. Eric Berrier is one of those guys we highlighted back way back when, in like week five or six or something like that. You know when we did when we talked about the Montana Eastern Washington game that got on ESPN two or ESPNU. I can't remember which one. And the wide receiver to watch out for FCS All American Tal Talolo Libu Jones. Excuse me before I mispronounce names again, like I usually do. And you know, Theo Day at quarterback for the Panthers of Northern Iowa is going to be a tough out. This is going to be a tough out. You know, going to the red field going to be a tough out. I'll tell you that much right now. UT Martin, Missouri State. Missouri State led by Bobby Petrito. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And the OBC champs, UT Martin, they have a quarterback by the name of Keon Howard who's looking really, really good. He might be out with an injury, though, so that might you know, hinder things for UT Martin. You know, Missouri State plays tough. You know, they're kind of myth they didn't get a seed as well, but they lost um, a game some point. I think they lost to Youngstown State um, that denied them a seed, so that's kind of unfortunate there. Um, this one's going to also be pretty interesting. Southern Illinois, South Dakota, Carson Camp. Y'all remember Carson Camp, the hero of that amazing Hail Mary play a couple weeks back. He's the guy for the Coyotes. He's the guy. And with Southern Illinois, they've lost three of their last four games, and they need to get it together. They need to get that defense together. They've been allowing some points. They've been allowing some points, baby. And they need to stop allowing points. They want to get to the second round. You want to get to the seven, you gotta, you gotta stop. You gotta stop things that aren't, you know, in your favor. And the biggest game, in my opinion, this will be, you know, by one FCS game that I think will be, you know, the thing. It will be the game of these of this first round. And that is FAMU, Florida AM, the Rattlers, going up against Southeast Louisiana. Cole Kelly, my goodness, one of the best players in, you know, FCS football right now. And he takes on one of the best defenses, led by Willie Simmons, head coach of Florida A&M, who successfully campaigned Florida A&M away in. And it helped that the bubble collapsed around Florida A&M as well. So that's why, also why they got in. Remember, remember how Rhode Island, Mercer, um, Eastern Kentucky, yeah, all those teams, yeah, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't look great. And there were other bubble teams as well that also didn't look great that weren't off the bubble at all in the selection show. So, you know, that worked out in FAMU's favor. Again, their only losses, their only losses were to an FBS team, I forget which one, and Jackson State by one point in one of the worst games I think I've seen this year. In the rain, just ugly, an ugly game. It was disgusting. I, I was truly disgusted by it. 
So can Florida A&M destroy the narratives around HBCUs and the FCS playoffs? Because we hear it all the time. Oh, well, maybe maybe HBCU should play the FCS playoffs. And then you got people that are like, no, they shouldn't. We got the Celebration Bowl and everything like that. Now that narrative might be changing again because of the, what happened to the MEAC and, you know, a really strong team like Jackson State that's really looking good. And the only and that Jackson State team only has one loss, so you know. But we'll talk about Jackson State next week. We'll talk about them next week in their conference championship. So this is a big time game for the SWAC. If they want the respect that they deserve, they gotta earn it. They gotta earn it. And this is this is no better batch up to earn it. You gotta go all the way out to Louisiana again though to be able to earn the opportunity. And the eight seeds that are awaiting, you know, Villanova is awaiting the Sacred Heart Holy Cross winner. And that will be a Friday game. Northern Iowa and Eastern Washington, they could be traveling up. Either one could be traveling up to Montana. Davidson and Kennesaw State could be going up to Eastern Tennessee State, or rather East Tennessee State. I know, I, I, I miss said it myself. Sorry about that. Uh, FAMU in Southeast Louisiana, they could be going up to James Madison, who's again, and we'll talk about we'll talk about James Madison. We'll also talk about Sam Houston, you know, who could play either S Stephen F. Austin again in a game that was looking really interesting earlier in the season. That battle of the Piney Woods matchup early in the season, yeah, that, yeah, that was that was really really something early in the season. Or Incarnate Word, and for North Dakota State, you know, Southern Illinois. Or South Dakota. Who knows? Who knows which team they will get. Tennessee Martin or Missouri State could go to Montana State. You know, that, that that's Montana State was the eighth seed team. And the Big Sky champ, Sacramento State, they're awaiting UC Davis or South Dakota State. We'll talk about these eight seeds, you know, more. We'll talk about them more in the second round. So... That's what I've got to say here. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to hopefully find a way to watch the FAMU Southeast Louisiana game. And the other games, I probably won't be looking at. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't be looking at them. But with all that being said, everybody, I hope y'all enjoyed you know, me talking about learning a little bit more about the FCS because, I've, again, I've been following I've been following what the FCS has been doing throughout the season. I just haven't really watched many games at all. I, I do know some players, you know, like Cole Kelly, that, that's a big example. But others, you know, or, or Julius Chestnut as well, but others, you know, things are kind of iffy, kind of iffy. So we'll keep learning. We'll keep learning as we go along. And again, shameful ESPN. I wanted the national championship on the ABC, damn it. Y'all take care, and I'll see you for that college football video with the FBS. We'll talk about the FBS in a few hours. Take care, everybody.